This is the Dungeon Coach Speed Training Bootcamp Part 2. Last video, I gave you guys damn tips on how you can better manage your players and help speed them up. And this week, we're focusing on you. I got two tips to help you be more efficient with those dice and three tips that when combined together, really help spice up the pacing and flow of your combat. Because if your players are bored and aren't engaged, it doesn't matter how fast you run things off, things are going to feel really slow because they're not interested. And stick around to the end where I give a big overview of everything combined together. So let's go. I could have easily put this first tip here into the other video as well about how to help players speed up, but this is for both Dungeon Masters and players, is you can roll all your attacks at once. I already went into why I don't like to roll the attack and damage at the same time, because that can get a little confusing, especially if you do this. I think this really does speed up combat, is if you have two attacks that you know you're gonna be making at the same dang thing, roll both of them at the same time. We'll talk about this more in a tip later in the video, but whenever you have all of your attacks done, you know that, okay, both of them hit, and now you can roll for damage all at the same time. Do this as the Dungeon Master too. If you have three kobolds attacking one person, roll all of them at once. Now some things to watch out for here is if certain creatures have advantage or something and others don't try and roll those off separately but you can all roll them at the same time roll for the advantage on one and roll a cluster for the other one or you can even color code your dice I do this a lot sometimes because who doesn't have enough dice to do this you know what I'm saying but you have different colors for each different monster and another thing to look out here as the dungeon master is if something's really close to dying then don't do that whether it's me rolling and I could maybe be putting a player unconscious or something like that roll each one at a time at that point because someone's really close to dying and the same thing for them is if you know one of the bad guys is about to die don't have them roll all their attacks at once because then they might have to be re-rolling and then which attack was what. But if everything's normal, just let all the attacks roll at once. Tip number two kind of ties into some of that color-coded dice I talked about, but have your dice set aside already. For my monsters on the back end, behind my Dungeon Master screen, I have the dice set aside for each of my monsters based on whatever they're doing. If I have one monster that has a 1d8 to attack, I have a 1d8 sitting on that monster's little index card or whatever I use for that monster. If I have a spellcaster that's going to use a lightning bolt that deals 8d6, I have 8d6 six set aside because I know I'm going to be casting that. Let's say you're running a dragon and you know you're going to need 16 d6, but you don't want to have to roll each of that and add each of them up. Another way to speed things up, again, if you want to roll dice for all of that and have all jangle all of those dice in your hand and have them hear it and do all that, of course, go ahead. But if you want to speed things up a little bit and have it ready, there's a dice app. I've already done a full video on of my favorite dice rollers. There's a ton of different ones out there. I'll have the apps down in the description because a lot of those apps really do speed up combat. And I'm going to be going over some of these in the player video I do on this later on. But this app can just in with a press of a button, roll 16 D6 for you in boom, 76 damage or whatever the dice is. So for my game prep as a dungeon master, I choose what types of things I want to roll for or not, but I set them aside either way, whether I put them in a phone app on a calculator or I actually have the actual dice set on the monster cards. This, by the way, is also why I run monsters a certain way. Whenever I homebrew them, I give them a certain damage dice type. So if they're going to have a D6, then they always have a D6 for all of their abilities. They might have a claw attack for 1D6, a bite attack for 2D6, but I'm not going to change 1D6 to 1D8 because now I'm grabbing different dice. It's way more efficient if a monster is a certain dice type. You know, that usually the size of it depends on if it's a small creature for D4s, big creature for D12s. And if that same D6 creature has a certain special ability, maybe it's 4D6, something like that. But those dragon breath weapons are always D6 because that's just classic. I'll also put that video down in the description on how I make monster stat blocks more efficient. Number three is gap descriptions. Fill in the gaps of combat between players rolling, you rolling, they saying what they do, you saying what they do, with dynamic descriptions that keep the attention, focus, and flow going. Now this right here doesn't actually literally speed up the amount of time it it takes combat, but that's not the difference. There's a big difference between combat feeling slow and actually being slow. And I think the more important thing here is not for combat to take up less time, but it's for it to not feel like a drag. So technically with this tip, you're adding more descriptions, which is maybe even adding more time, but it's keeping everything going. It's keeping everybody engaged. It's keeping them visualizing the story unfolding. Summarize and reiterate each piece that's being added to the story. Somebody runs away, somebody goes for a strike, and then they hit. And when you describe the next person's attack, the dragon's reeling back from the blow from their friend just made, and they sneak in for an attack. Bringing back in other players moves from previous turns also helps keep them engaged because their character is being talked about and it keeps everybody on the same page and bringing this one big team that's fighting this thing together so while joe's gathering up his freaking dice to get ready to go you can paint a big picture for everybody else of what's about to happen especially if it's a huge moment that's about to happen and this big damage there's a crit on a smite that just happened and everybody's waiting for that damage really set that thing up and if a player describes you're about to take a big risk for some role really hype that up too so you can take all these descriptions in between everything that's happening 
happening back and forth and keep everything elevated. Time out. Speaking of descriptions, the sponsor of this video is Describe, who do online descriptions for exactly some of the stuff I'm talking about here. If you struggle with giving descriptions in a really dynamic way, whether it's in combat, like we're talking about right now, or they walk into a town for the first time and you want to describe it to them in a really awesome way, or they go down into the depths, you want to paint a really good picture, or describe a monster for the first time. Describe has professionally written text boxes you can go in before or during your game prep and see what stuff you want to be able to describe better. So here's an example with this whole combat thing. Let's say you are the DM and one of the players is about to cast Lightning Bolt and you want to give an awesome description for them. Or maybe you, the player, want to give this awesome description to take that Lightning Bolt to the next level. Because trust me, we've all seen those players that just say, uh, I cast Lightning Bolt. But let's see what Describe has to say. You jut your flat hand out, fingers spread wide, small hairs in the back of your neck, and along your arms stand up straight. From the tips of your fingers, bolts of white hot lightning arc out for an instant before blasting out in a straight line. Boom, there you go. Now I did take out some of those big words in that paragraph because I myself wouldn't personally say that and you don't want to sound like not yourself when you're doing these descriptions because people are like, what, what, what the? But take these and make them your own and really take the spell casting to the next level. But Describe has a bunch of this stuff for free or you can sign up for a subscription using the code the Dungeon Coach to get 10% off. And as usual, all those links will be down in the description. Back to combat. Number four is the come back around to players who are currently doing something that's in result Result won't impact what you're doing right now. I don't know what to call this one, but I'm sure Zach will put something here to label this thing. But here's how it works. Let's say the fight just started and the Barbarian landed two attacks on this big huge monster and now they're having to roll for damage. There's no way this thing's going to die from the damage, so what you can do is go on to the next player and start asking them what they're going to do while the player rolls their damage. Another example would be one of your casters casted a spell and it had some sort of effect that you need to figure out what the thing is, so you tell them to look it up and you go to the next person. You now know that this monster is gonna be under the effect of something, but that might not necessarily impede the next person from going. Now, let me say this. This is a more advanced Dungeon Master tip. I don't want you to do this all the time. If you're cutting every single person off before their turn's completely over. If you have a player that's easily rolling the damage, you know they're a next level player and they have watched the player video on this that I haven't made yet, but it will be in the description when I have, is if you know that you're talking to a player that they have their dice ready and they're rolling it and they can just roll it, don't, don't go to the next person. Let them finish that moment because you know that that's happening. But they're like, oh, okay, here we, and they start reaching around for all this different stuff and it's a paladin. So they have some smite dice and they have some normal, whatever's going on. Then yeah, go to the next person. What are you doing? Okay, cool. And then as soon as they have, as soon as they're done with that action, you need to go back in and fully embrace that moment. I don't want y'all to just like cut off these players here and there and be like, okay, cool. How much damage? Oh, 20. Okay. And then it, they feel dismissed and put down. So make sure whenever you say, all right, roll for damage, you go to the next person. What are you doing? They're gathering up the dice. They're gathering up the dice. They're rolling for it. They're calculating. They're adding. This player's moving around, getting ready to go. Okay, so now I'm going to, I got the damage. What you got? 20 damage? Go into the description. Go into the description. Fully reinvest back into that player so they don't feel dismissed that you just pass them up because you will suffer everyone's engagement if you keep doing that. And this person just, oh, you got 20? Okay, cool. What are you doing? Okay, so what are you doing? And you just keep, hot. you're just not investing with every single player. So make sure when you do this, I really want to stress this, that if you do skip a player to go to the next one to get the ball rolling there, give them a full description of what's going on, especially if it's a big moment that they just had. But if it's something small and he keeps moving, just keep the ball rolling. You know as a dungeon master what the feel is at the table, if it's something you should just keep going on through or not. And the spellcaster analogy I use, maybe that magic effect is going to directly affect the next player's action. So then yes, go ahead and let them figure out what that is. And maybe the game slows down a little bit, but then everybody's going to be moving forward with all the right information. So now if you have watched both videos, you take a big step back, you can see the ringmaster of this circus that the dungeon master is giving countdowns to players that are going too slow, giving the next player a heads up so they know they're about to go, giving rolls out to the players so they know that they're engaged and they have certain things to be keeping and looking out for, giving descriptions to bring the entire story and constantly be painting the picture of how all of them are tying in together. So here's an example of all this combined together. Combat starts, player one, you're up. Player two, get ready, you're next. Player one casts Guiding Bolt at the creature as they give a description of the glowing energy charging up, shooting across the battlefield. As they roll, all of this is what I just said, they're rolling the dice, they're rolling the attack right now and by the time I finish that roll boom they've hit what is it to hit hits I tell them the roll for damage player two what are you doing you see as this holy light hits and encases the monster with energy you would have advantage on that attack player two says they want to run in and make both of their attacks on it I tell them roll the first attack with advantage and the second one normal player one you got your damage 17 let's go radiant energy blasts into this creature as it reels back encasing it with light as you your first attack hits second attack misses the glowing light guides your sword straight to the creature's back as it reels back, cutting it across its body. But as the glowing light fades from player one's guiding bolt, the creature brings its arm down and blocks your second attack. Now I'll stop right there, but hopefully you can see how both of those players almost feel like they went at the same time because combat should feel like that. It shouldn't feel like guiding bolt. Okay, go ahead. All right. All right. It's, oh, it hits. Okay. Yeah. So, 
Oh, you're next. 17, okay. All right, what are you doing? You know, ah, it's just so much more room for dynamic flow and bringing everybody together. And if you have this type of flow and everything, player three, who they're getting ready to go. And you can also see how I described their actions intertwined together. The light from the guiding bolt was what caused him to be able to hit. And you can see how they all feel like they're helping each other. And when your players understand and have these windows of your descriptions, they can be doing what they're supposed to be doing. And if a good player, the player number two, a good player number two will already have his damage. Once I say that second or the first attack, hits as I'm doing a description they'll go ahead and roll for their dice and they might have their damage dice total ready by the end of my description of what's going on and they'll say 12 damage I'm like for 12 damage boom and then now we're up to speed and I really want to reiterate that I did not discount the player's guiding bolt whenever I jumped back to them and they had the guiding bolt happen I tied in their guiding bolt into what the player two was doing so I didn't discount them okay so for tip number five we just talked about how adding in descriptions in between actions can draw players in and make them feel more alive without making it actually be faster well this tip is also adding on something else which might feel weird if I'm trying to speed up combat you should be taking out things making it more efficient but this is huge if you're adding Add in story components and social components into your combat. If your combat feels like it's taking too long, it might be because it's only combat and nothing more than that. A lot of players, especially the more role play heavy ones, want to get across the plot and get some things going. And a lot of times combats feel bad because you just have to stop and you deal this combat and then the plot can continue. Have parts of the plot keep going. Keep telling a story as the combat's happening. So for social encounters during combat, voice the bad guys. Talk some smack to your players, especially the players that haven't gone for a little bit like they just had their turn it's been the next person's turn and you're playing the bad guys talk some smack to them to keep them engaged at the table if it's going to be a while before that druid player's turn they start pulling out their phone or <laughs> stacking up the dice tower voice one of those bad guys you're playing and calls out to the druid hey kitty kitty Oh, that's kind of creepy. But myself personally has a little list off to the side of things that I can say, because this was a big weakness of mine when I first started DMing, of not being able to say stuff. I would just run the encounter and I wouldn't say anything. I would just kind of be the referee of the combat and just say what stuff happens. But role play those bad guys during combat, which will also inspire your players to do the same. But I'd have a little list of things, whether it's smack talk or maybe quest objectives or maybe some other things going on that like, give hints towards a bigger power that's going on or whatever else is going on to try and talk to each of the players. Or the second big tip I have for you here to add into combat to make it feel more alive and engaging is give it alternate objectives. So it's not just we're killing them before they kill us. Give some sort of alternate objective or thing going on that's tied into the story and why they're here. Something else going on that adds a sense of excitement or maybe even a plot of something happening between two characters that's happening over the top of this whole battle. I just remembered a combat I ran where I did both of these story and social encounters together in one. They're in the middle of this big arena pit gladiator style and this patriarch, this very, very powerful figure that had thrown them in there in the first place was testing them. This was basically a gauntlet of death that they were in and each turn at the beginning of their turn I said what are you going to say to the person they basically had a free action to socially interact with this person or other creatures in the battlefield some players were trying to use that free social interaction to talk to the other people to turn against the big bad or some of the players were trying to talk to the big bad to show them that they were worthy it was basically a mini social encounter within the combat that was happening and think about how engaging that is what am I going to say as my social thing what am I going to do for my actual combat thing there's so much stuff to think about that you can stay engaged the whole time so when it comes to that player's turn yeah they're going to have to be on top of their toes they can't get their they can't build a dice tower they gotta think about what they're gonna say and what they're gonna do and trust me that combat took a little while to go through but i can promise you it did not feel slow check out the website check out describe and until next time stay creative and think outside that box peace